this video, I will be comparing the Stoic philosophy with Peterson's philosophy, analysing the differences and similarities in relation to how you should respond to the world and critiquing the major contrasting factor between Stoicism and Peterson's philosophy. Stoicism challenges us to be accountable, to take responsibility in our lives so that we can work towards a life of content filled with pursued virtue. Self-improvement is never-ending. The workings to empty ourselves of unproductive means and intense negative emotions is acquired for an adequately orientated life from the Stoic perspective. Applying Stoic wisdom to everyday life can help modern man. As Jordan Peterson would say, to rescue their fathers from the belly of the whale, or more so themselves in the style of Jonah. Peterson motivates individuals to be reflective of their state and to work to fix their own lives rather than being resentful, complaining and critical of the world around them, as everyone is dependent for the improvement of the world. Stoic writers and Peterson advocate for an attitude that promotes gratitude, thus appreciating what is going well and not overlooking positive developments in life, and that complaining about things outside of your own control is completely useless. As Epictetus says, he is a wise man who does not grieve for things he has not, but rejoices for those which he has. Just keep in mind, the more we value things that are outside our control, the less of control we have. Or, man is not affected not by events, but by the views he takes of them. Peterson frequently calls on the events of the past for a call to why gratitude is a necessary virtue. He writes, There's some real utility in gratitude. It's also good protection against the dangers of victimhood and resentment. It took untold generations to get you where you are. A little gratitude might be in order. If you're going to insist on bending the world to your way, you better have your reasons. He focuses on finding personal fulfillment in development of character and success, and sees the search for happiness being a fruitless endeavour as only through personal development and understanding will meaning be found. He talks about climbing hierarchies in pursuit for success, working in competition to rise to the top of a field of endeavour which allows you in the process to chip away towards a more resilient form of self. This mode of thinking is absent in Stoic writings, which mainly focus on character development towards excellence through set virtues such as courage, temperance, justice and wisdom. Thus the embodiment of these key virtues are the only true good that you can manifest, no matter the external physical outcome. One may ascend to the top of hierarchies through hard effort and achieve mastery by following Stoic wisdom. But this hierarchical talk is not the focus for Stoics, well at least not on the surface. Isn't embodying laws of virtue a upward ascend, a metaphysical ontological movement towards higher being? It is a metaphorical way of living which can be seen in the Stoic path to betterment. With comparison to Peterson, the embodiment of virtues is no different, I believe, to his view of the embodiment of the Logos being the principle and embodiment of divine reason and creative order, which to a degree is the same as the virtues presented in Stoicism, just a different expression of the same outcome. Taking action to improve our lives rather than making excuses, even if starting with small steps will offer many benefits and is preferable as opposed to misery. This is something both Peterson and Stoics both highly agree upon, as Peterson says, let your insufficiencies burn off like dead wood. In relation to Stoicism, Seneca writes about recognising deficiencies in ourselves and working on them to make internal change in the present. He writes, Let us do what men are wont to do when they are late in setting forth, and wish to make up for lost time by increasing their speed. Let us ply the spur. Our time of life is the best possible for these pursuits. For the periods of boiling and foaming is now past. The faults that were uncontrolled in the first fierce heat of youth are now weakened but little further effort is needed to extinguish them. Peterson talking about making positive changes in our lives says the following, The better ambitions have to do with development of character and ability, rather than status and power. Status you can lose. You carry character with you wherever you go, and it allows you to prevail against adversity. The first step, perhaps, is to take stock. Who are you? When you buy a house and prepare to live in it, you hire an inspector to list all its faults, as it is in reality, now not as you wish it could be. You will even pay him for the bad news. You need to know. You need to discover the home's hidden flaws. You need to know whether they are cosmetic imperfections or structural inadequacies. You need to know because you can't fix something if you don't know it's broken. And you're broken. You need an inspector, an internal critic. It could play that role if you could get it on track, if you and it could operate. 
Peterson's 12 Rules for Life and Antidote to Chaos makes for a strong stoic reading when it comes to his views on death, suffering, pain and anxiety. As with the Stoics, Peterson balances these realities by reminding us to develop character and take responsibilities for one's thoughts and actions, instead of longing for happiness. The most standout point that highlights the contrast between Peterson and Stoicism is anger. As I quote from Peterson, Psychological forces are never unidimensional in their value, however, and the truly appalling potential of anger and aggression to produce quality and mayhem are balanced by the ability of those primordial forces to push back against oppression, speak truth, and motivate resolute movement forward in times of strife, uncertainty, and danger. Implying that anger is typically unhelpful and cruel when it's chaotic, he also says that there's a righteous form of anger that can help allow us to fight oppression, demonstrate the truth and face uncertainty with willful courage. This concept is very Aristotelian, as I quote from Aristotle, We praise a man who feels angry on the right grounds and against the right persons, and also in the right manner, at the right moment and for the right length of time. As due to it being an instinctful emotion in human nature, the ability to stand back and view such potential without oneself given heightened self-respect and strength, as this ability has the flexibility to be used towards good intention. As I quote, they develop more self-respect, then, perhaps, they begin to resist oppression. They see that they have the ability to withstand because they are terrible too. They see they can and must stand up because they begin to understand how genuinely monstrous they will become, otherwise feeding on their resentment, transforming it into the most destructive of wishes. To say it again, there is very little difference between the capacity for mayhem and destruction, integrated and strength of character. This is one of the most difficult lessons of life. Integrated anger can be an extremely skillful tool, not only to protect oneself against the world, but also to be a truly moral person, especially when choosing to not act out in a moral action. So what do the Stoics say? The Stoics directly dispute the Aristotelian premise assumed by Peterson that anger can be used constructively towards motivating us to do good things. Anger may be sufficient but not necessary to achieve good things. Perhaps there's always a better way of achieving the same result without anger. People motivate themselves in lots of different ways, without having to draw upon anger. There are disadvantages in using anger in response that causes alternatives to be better appreciated, because anger, if anything, dramatically impairs our ability for clear reasoning. The Stoics rejected this view and argued instead that anger wasn't just a feeling but always a way of thinking about events in life. To be angry isn't just a physiological adaptation, but also causes us to think differently, with the favour of making quick responses with a great deal of outward negative effect, or associating perceived threat towards our own self-esteem and interests which, depending on the individual, can cause us to bubble over with bad intentions. Anger is therefore often the consequence of fear or perceived loss, according to the Stoics, and sometimes these fears can be realistic, but also very imaginary especially when one broods over such emotions for a long period of time with little self-control. One of the main practices of Stoicism was using plain language to describe events without strong value judgments or emotional incentive. This was called objective representation. You could say Peterson's style is in conflict with this approach of presenting thought. He uses emotionally charged language and strong value judgments throughout his lectures and writings something the Stoics thought would be bound to lead to arguments, causing irrational emotions and distorting the thinking of others due to the emotional responses that such dialect evokes. I wouldn't say he is a Stoic, but he definitely has represented a Stoic-like response in the past when students would rebel against his lecture talks. Even though being emotional, he is more observant and analytical. In my view, I would agree with his view on anger, because it's very Jungian in relation to this shadow. If you have been repressing anger into your unconscious because of past negative events, it will come to a serious disadvantage to you, especially in relation to confidence, strength and respect from others. Not because you could become a bully with the anger that you have repressed, but that you are understanding of its capabilities, but you choose not to act them out because you are a moral individual. But when you do, it is done in a way that is well orientated with other emotions and intentions and not just raw, untamed anger. This will allow you to build up personal strength and self-respect. 
If you enjoyed this video make sure to give it a like, comment your thoughts down below and subscribe for more content on philosophy and psychology. Thanks for watching.